Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Edusat Live Lectures. Dear friends, as you know that we have started a series on Sustainable Development School and today we are conducting yet another lecture in the same series. In today's lecture, we will try to understand the concept of Spatial Information Technology for Sustainable Development Goals, Concepts and Approaches. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor Singh is Professor in Department of Geography in Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. He is also Vice President of International Geographical Union. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome Sir. Thank you Amritji. Welcome viewers. Today we are going to discuss very important areas of science that is a special information technology for sustainable development goals. How a special information technology can play an important role for promoting sustainable development goals. You know, already we have 17 goals and I would like to take few case study also. But first I would like to explain about importance, concept, approaches of a special information technology. A special information technology is a transformative tool to empower individual to advocate and innovate for promoting sustainable development goals. The technology includes remote sensing, global positioning system and geographic information system. In other words, sometimes people are using the word geoinformatic also. A special information system answers three general questions, what, where and when. But where appears to be the most important in a special information system. The combination of these three questions describe a special location, condition, trends, pattern and modeling. Now through this diagram you can see that the how a special information technology may be considered as a transdisciplinary tool where people from physical sciences, social sciences, biological sciences can contribute, can bring different type of ideas and using three important techniques. I would like to use the word geographical technology like remote sensing, geographic information system, cartographic surveying and also G GPS has emerged recently also as a data collecting tool. I would like to define a special information technology. A special information system means the geographical perspective of information system. The information denotes to some specific set of location on the earth surface. It is a collection of computer hardware, software, database, users, application and, GI, uh, and special experts or scientists which has capability of data capturing, storing, retrieving, manipulating, analyzing and displaying the specially geo-reference spatial and non-spatial database. Here I would like to mention that geo-reference is a very very important characteristics of a spatial uh, uh, technology because we have to assign latitude, longitude for any map. It is a system in which most of the data are spatially analyzed and set of a steps operated in order to answer queries about spatial entities in database using remote sensing, GPS and GIS. Now I would like to take up all three one by one. First I would like to take remote sensing. 
sensing from the remote areas. It's a very important technology and I would like to define taking the definition of Lis Lilison and Kiefer. I quote, remote sensing is the science and art of obtaining information about an object, area or phenomena through the analysis of data acquired by a device that is not a contact with the object, area or phenomena under investigation." Unquote. I would like to take further this definition, little bit more elaborate. James B. Campbell 2003 defines, I quote, remote sensing is the practice of deriving information about earth, land and water surface using images acquired from an overhead perspective using electromagnetic radiation in one or more region of the electromagnetic uh, magnetic spectrum reflected or emitted from the earth's surface. I would like to quote also the very famous remote sensing express particularly for the digital image processing John uh, Jensen. I quote, remote sensing is the process of collecting data about objects or landscape features without coming into direct physical contact with them. Now I would like to present different elements and steps involved in the process of or procedure of remote sensing. Remote sensing detect energy coming from the sun. So, source of energy is very, very important. Then, we interaction of electromagnetic radiation with the atmosphere, that is a second stage, sun energy coming to the earth surface passing through atmosphere. Interaction of electromagnetic radiation with an earth surface. Then, we can also take energy received by the sensor. Then transmission, transmission done to the ground station, then one can do analyze, we can do pre-processing, we can rectify the data and then it can be supplied to the users. Types of remote sensing platform. Now you can see we have ground board, air board, a space board, and then a space board, two type of satellites, sun synchronous, geostationary. We have all remote sensing satellites are sun synchronous, and generally our weather satellites are the geostationary. Now I would like to present before you the all different Indian remote sensing satellite system, you know, launched so far. First time we launched in 1988, IRS 1A, 1B, 91, IRS P2, 94, 1C that brought a revolution in remote sensing technology in 1995, giving resolution of 5.8 meter, then IRS P3, IRS 1D, OceanSat, ResourceSat, CartoSat in 2005, CartoSat 2 in 2007, ResourceSat 2, April 2011 and ReSat 2012. And out uh, almost all except three, all remote sensing satellites are uh, still working. I would like to give you detailed configuration of resource chart 2. Particularly you see least 4 sensor is there giving the resolution of 5.8 meter, then least 3 giving the resolution of 23.5 meter, then we have advanced WIPs that is 56 meter. So what I would like to tell you that in regional study or in geography, 
generally we use the three keywords micro meso and micro so micro level a wips may be very useful list 3 like a meso level study and list 4 more detail study or maybe the micro level study uh you can see the different bands uh, uh you know uh, available under this it is also very important to present characteristics of the different other satellites all are landsat 1 2 3 4 5 spot irs 1a irs 1c particularly i would like to mention about irs 1c nature sun synchronous altitude 817 meter orbital period 101.35 minutes inclination degree 98.69 degree temporal resolution of 24 days resolution 341 uh, then sensors are like a list 3 pan wips are available now it is very important how we can use such remote sensing data for our study purpose and for that you know we you can see the different type of spectral regions and spectral bands available most many satellites we have visible near infrared short wave infrared mid wave infrared thermal infrared or microwave it depends upon the quality of the uh, remote sensing satellites it is very important to see here the application of different spectral region and you can see that ultraviolet particularly for electronic processes but the most important range is visible and near infrared where we we can see the surface chemical composition vegetation cover and biological property mid infrared generally it is a very very important use for surface chemical composition thermal infrared surface heat capacity and you know this type of uh, is a very important particularly for looking the urban heat islands study microwave it is a very very important atmospheric constituents surface temperature surface physical property and atmospheric precipitation radio frequency scattering condition surface physical property i would like to put before you important uh, area of you know application and advances in remote sensing system hyperspectral remote sensing also known as imaging spectroscopy it is a relatively new technology that is currently being investigated by researcher and scientist with regard to the detection and identification of minerals terrestrial vegetation and man made materials and background hyper spectral data sets are generally composed of about 100 to 200 spectral bands and you can see this application a vast application starting from area of atmosphere like a water vapor study cloud property aerosol study to coming to ecology chlorophyll leaf water geology like mineral and soil types coastal water particularly the chlorophyll phytoplankton dissolve organic materials snow and ice snow cover grain size biomass burning commercial like mineral exploitation microwave remote sensing is still in a very not very advanced stage and this is a very very important for the uh, soil moisture and the water logged area studying underground property canadian remote sensing system european remote sensing system 
since you know many years they have been working on that i would like to mention also this the microwave remote sensing can be also used even for knowing the uh, 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 movement of lineament before occurrence of the earthquake so lot of this microwave remote sensing has a promising approach even for monitoring and you know predicting earthquake now i would like to uh, take the different multi spectral you know satellites noaa vhhr 1100 meter goes 700 modis that is a very very important lot of people are using modis data for even uh, ct study temperature that can be used for the planning urban planning purpose land side tm and etm giving resolution of 30 to 60 meter spot 10 to 20 meter econos 4 to 1 meter and then we have a very high resolution satellites like econos you know on pan chromatic band giving the 1 meter resolution and quick bird 0.6 meter resolution i would like to mention here that these all multi spectral data you can divide into the three category very detailed micro level study like you can use the econos quick bird then we have the meso level study like a uh, landsat spot and then we have other type of uh, macro level study trends in remote sensing system now uh you can see this uh we have a high resolution satellites high spectral resolution high radiometric resolution high temporal resolution you can see the course uh, resolution satellite centers particularly here i would like to uh, mention take the case study of two like a landsat thematic meter can be used for land land use land cover study and then modis that is for atmospheric water vapor ocean color cloud aerosol property sea atmospheric temperature and so modis has emerged a very important study for many different type of application you can see this modis clear lidar also light detection and ranging is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of pulse laser to measure the range particularly the variable distances generally lidar instrument principally consist of a laser a scanner a specialized gps receiver aeroplane and helicopters are the most commonly used platform can be used for the lidar study you can see light detection and ranging uh, study avhhr uh, data from nasa quick bird a very high resolution satellite you can see giving us Uh, multi spectral resolution 2.5 meter and pan chromatic 61 cm resolution uh, it can be used for the accurate base map infrastructure mapping disaster assessment you know all different type of the very micro level study econos 4 meter multi spectral and you can go to the 1 meter pan chromatic resolution now how we can use the data and i i would like to mention about the these are the different elements of aerial photo image and visual interpretation this can be used for the aerial photo analysis also and then we use also for the black and white uh, satellite on the basis of the tone color size shape texture pattern shadow of any object site or location also can be very very important and then maybe we can combine two three in order to find a very better result and resolution then you know most of the time now people are using the digital image processing that is a computer handling of remote sensing data we do the pre processing work and pre Uh, a pre processing work generally a uh, radiometric and geometric correction pre processing means the correction you know how we can 
do the correction. First, most of the time, radiometric correction done already by the supplier. So, room, remote sensing supplier, you know, they used to do the radiometric correction, but for better analysis, I think better you can do yourself. Geometric correction most of the time you have to go uh, do and for that you know we have different type of the computer programs for that and we have to assign the latitude and a, a longitude of the any you know map we can do. Then you know image enhancement is a very very important you know contrast enhancement linear, stretch and spatial filtering, we use the different type of the methods particularly for you know giving the better result of the data. Then we have the image classification. So, unsupervised and the supervised classification. So, in the earlier this case you can see uh, people are using these type of the keys, these are also known as keys for image interpretation. So, generally we use for identifying the different objects like a tree. A tree can be you know uh, identified on the basis of the shape, sometime color. So, and then if we are not able to do, we have to do the association. But digital, in digital image processing, ground truthing is very, very important. You have to take a selective for that maybe in case of India like a survey of India topo sheets can be used. Other type of the maps provided by a different type of the vendors that can be used you know. And then we can do the GCP, we can use the GCP ground control point from any uh, map you know available, secondary information available. It may be the one like a topo sheet or maybe a combination of two, three can be used. And then finally, we can go to the supervised classification and unsupervised classification. Unsupervised classification where we use uh, cluster analysis where you know computer calculate different type of grouping, you can run the program, you can ask you know a program computer to classify the whole you know map into 5 category, 7 category or the 10 category and then computer will calculate and then on the basis of collateral information you can identify even you can find the misclassified pixels. So, sometime you have to uh, and the correct these type. Supervised classification is a more correct can give you the better information. We have a, a different type of the statistical technique people are using Mahanalobis distance maximum likelihood you know method max uh, minimum distance these are the two, three important logical, you know, operations, a statistical operation people are using for uh, unsupervised classification. And the first step we can get the land use and land cover. Land use, land cover is a very important part of the uh, remote sensing because it is not only denoting the physical, chemical, and biological processes, but it it has a lot of you know implication for society. One can get a societal response you know. Uh, like people are if shifting the land use system then they are motivated by some you know forces, globalization or the different type of the market forces. So, in this way it is possible to have a better result. But image enhancement is a very very important to improve the visual interpretability of an image, satellite image. As you know the data, remote sensing data you can get in analog form, digital form. Now people are using uh, digital data, you know, 
and so that is why DIP, digital image processing, is generally used. But traditionally, people have been using the uh, these different type of keys in order to identify the you know black and white, even the color uh, photograph you can get. Uh, so by increasing the operant distinction between the feature of the scene, so enhancement is a very very important, particularly for digital image processing. And main objective is to create new image from the original image in order to increase the amount of information that can be visually interpreted from the data. Because you know better the data, better management, better information, better management one can do. And so that is why enhancement is very, very important. Enhancement operations are normally applied to image data after the appropriate restoration procedure have been performed. Now it is very important to also the mention about the global pogenesing. It is also has emerged very recently as a data collection tool, particularly where we can't reach, you know, GPS can take the photograph giving you the latitude, longitude and altitude. So GPS is an instrument that provide the locational information. It is a network of satellite that continuously transmit information in the form of growth that makes it possible to identify precise position on the earth's surface by measuring distance from the satellite. So GPS is another important geospatial tool which provides latitude, longitude and altitude. And if you have these three for landslide study, avalanche, you know, occurred in the high mountain region, it is very difficult for any you know, individual surveyor, researcher to reach there. So glacier study, you know, a snow avalanche, all it is very, very important tool, you know, because we can get the location. And this is a, based on the constellation of the 24 uh, high altitude satellite called navigational system. Then you know DGPS, differential G GPS provides the spatial location and more terrain characteristics. So this is becoming a more important these days. Different segments, this can all be divided into the three category. A space segment, you know, this the navigational system, the satellites, 20 pairs. Then the ground segment, uh, segment where we collect the information and then the user segment. Now we have a very, very new, we have the permanent, many countries have a, all over the country, the GPS station. It is possible for you to install in your car the GPS, you know, go collecting the data, you can transmit through the mobile to uh, lab and then you can store. And so you can see this mechanism, location of the satellite, distance of the satellite, and it is very important uh, for the GPS receiver, GPS satellite, GPS receiver. Differential global positioning system works by placing a GPS receiver at a known location. Since the reference station knows its exact location, it can determine the errors in the satellite signals. So this can be very, very useful. Differences between the major and calculator range each satellite can view becomes a differential correction. Application, we have the many various application of GPS and particularly used for mapping purposes. I already told latitude, longitude for landslide study, you know, but this all can be analyzed under the GIS system. Thank you.
welcome viewers we are going to take now the special information technology for sustainable development goals and we are going to study different application and experiences taking case study from sustainable development goals this whole data collected through remote sensing aerial photograph non spatial uh, data all can be analyzed through gis that is known as geographic information system or aeronof define gis as any manual or computer based set of procedure used to store and manipulate geographically reference data unquote i would like to also mention the very important person who defined mf goodchild 1990 <coughs> gis refers to any digital information system whose records are somehow geographically reference like any information system it combine a database with a set of procedure or algorithms that operate on the database because of the geographical nature of the data the input and output sub system must be unusually elaborate and must rely on a specialized graphics hardware such as plotters digitizers and scanners unquote we have a different components of special information technology or gis hardware software users database gis specialist so database and users are very very important and gis and uh, specialist type of gis we have gis software operating system then desktop based software server based software we have a based on type of database raster database vector database vector denote the objects raster denotes the grid so that is the main uh, difference based on data model card centric data centric capability of gis we have a several capability starting from data output data capture data storing data maintenance data query data manipulation data analysis and then finally data display so this has a now it is very important to see different type of the database we have a special database and particularly here i would like to mention about the raster and vector and many softwares are also related to many softwares are related to these you know raster database so raster denotes the grid vector denotes the object but many people are using interchangeably for study vector may be the very important for data capturing a storing and that can be analyzed through the raster or the grid system so for operation raster based system is very very important in this context i would like to mention about the point line polygon area and then we have the non spatial database hierarchical data structure network data structure like transport and all relational data structure now you can see this the point line area point city location may be the example of point uh, river uh, may be the uh, you know example of line uh, even transport network is example of line area like a district boundary block boundary uh, village boundary can be considered as a polygon can area now it is very important to know before going for mapping geo reference system geo referencing is a process of providing coordinate system and what is the coordinate system 
means latitude and longitude. And so, we have to do the different type of the methodological description, we use the map projection, uh, the coordinate system may be geographic or projected. This geo referencing of database provides the ability to measure the length, size and shape of the features. Utility and choice of projection is also very important while mapping the earth surface, any projection system datum is used to locate the precise position because the shape of the earth is spheroid due to the flattering at the poles. There are two types of datum used while mapping, one is geocentric datum and another is local datum. There are various projection system available from the family of cylindrical, conical, azimuthal projection to represent the various location uh, of the earth surface. In India, polyconic, Lambert, conformal conic and universal transverse marketer projection UTN are widely used to represent a small scale to large scale maps. Then I would like to come to the map visualization. Map visualization refers to a set of tools and techniques supporting a spatial data analysis through the use of visualization. It is also referred as a geographic visualization or geo visualization which focuses on visualization as it relates to a spatial data that can be applied to all the stages of pro problem solving in geographical analysis from development of initial hypothesis through knowledge discovery, analysis, presentation and evaluation. Visualization process, goals of map visualization, very very we have to consider the factors of geo visualization, then different type of geo visualization technique. Now I would like to take up few important applications of geographic information system under the seat special information set. It varies from resource appraisal and management to land resource, land capability analysis, suitability analysis, many geological type of operation like a groundwater analysis, even for the groundwater exploration. And so that is why for drought study this can be very, very useful. Forest, not only the forest type but the productivity of the forest, agriculture and land use, land cover change study, cropping pattern, then this can all be used data for the, even the crop modeling, hydrology and water management and uh, most important operation I can say that water set identification, metrology, variety of infrastructure can be mapped like a educational facility, health facility, uh, transport facility and this all can be uh, developed in an integrated map and a developmental, uh, 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 the quality of development of the region can be identified on the basis of this. Traffic arrangement, municipal work, particularly water supply, then also the garbage collection, all very, very important. Sometime emergency management, on the time of disaster, topographical maps, such remote sensing maps are very, very important, you know, for during the earthquake or during the uh, you know, damage assessment during the flood, damage assessment, even for crime management, you know, the identifying the location. We have a vast application uh, starting from the earth sciences to the life sciences. Then, a spatial mapping. In this context, we have to do the four important you know task data preparation or designing and for that quality of map is a very real time data sometime map scale 
relevance of data, data inaccuracy we have to see, compatibility is very very important, precision, uh, maintaining the card book, then registration and transformation into the real coordinate system. Then one can say this is a real map, you know, a geospatial map. Then a spatial data input analysis, it may be the single mode transformation or the multiple. You can do the through the single map, you know, different type of the type, you know, combining and classifying, making the new category or even overlay, you know, combining different layers and finding a suitable, you know, our desired results according to our objective. Then a special database editing. Now you can see here one example I would like to give you geospatial analysis how we use here the soil, soil texture, soil unit, rainfall, agroecological, block boundary, land unit. These all can be very very helpful for the crop modeling, agricultural planning, land use planning. Then non-spatial database is also very very important and non uh, special database coming from uh, uh, like a micro level I can say this Khasra uh, Khatawni uh, land records available from the you know uh, from the Patwari then you can take the district statistical handbook census of India giving the lot of the data apart from that many other ministries an organization they have they are collecting the data and such data also can be used under the computer system. So actually SIT you know integrates a spatial data, temporal data and attribute data. So all different kind of data you can then also I would like to bring here the uh, some new type of the traditional conventional data and non-conventional data. Conventional data like a uh, you can say that uh, conventional data like a uh, census, topographical sheets, survey of India topographical sheet, non-conventional data coming from aerial photograph, remote sensing, GPS system, this all can be combined. Then you know also the data, continuous data and the discontinuous data. So apart from point line area, I would like to also mention about the continuous data and discontinuous data. What is discontinuous data? Discontinuous data may be in a block village boundary or in a district boundary of a, a, a block, different blocks. So it is a discontinuous data. But when we are dealing with topographical sheet, relief data, then it is known as continuous data. So a special data analysis, we use the different type of queries, different logical operation for queries, measurement, transformation, I would like to mention the buffering, proximity analysis overlay analysis, SVLES, a spatial interpolation like a digital elevation model, DTM, digital terrain model, TIN, network analysis and then we can do the data manipulation. Now you can see here through this map interpolation of rainfall data, you know how the almost the you can see this the continuity and less than 500 uh, millimeter. 5 to 1000, 1000 to 1500. So, such type of the map, you know, using the point data because different, you know, location have been taken particularly for collecting the rainfall information and then, uh, you know, uh, using and, uh, you know, depicting through the map. Now, I would like to take few important case study. And first I would like to take the land use planning and modeling. 
For that, first I would like to take the case study of Hirojpur uh, Jhirka block of Gurgaon district of Haryana. It encompasses a total geographical area of 323 meters uh, uh, square kilometers. It is a part of Mewat region. Mewat, despite having the rich history and culture currently facing with complex socio-economic uh, backwardness. The drivers of backwardness in the region may be poor soil condition, dry lands, inadequate irrigation facility and relatively low rate of literacy. And most of the study area is flat terrain. Different remote sensing database have been taken IRS-1B, list 2, IRS-1C, list 3. Uh, false colors composing various type of thematic maps and survey of India topographical sheets were used for this study. GIS has mainly served as an instrument to store, analyze for preparing the land use model in a conservative, economic and productive manner. Now you can see this the land use and land cover map of this area. This shows that uh, Ravi crop, Kharif crop and where we have the both, ra, uh, double crop means the Ravi and Kharif both, fellow land available, scrub, forest plantation, waterlogged area, uh, land sandy area, barren rocks. If you, you, we can get this land use land cover, you can find the soil map is a very very important for land use. Soil map can be you know collected from the uh, 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 National Bureau of Soil Survey land use planning and even the uh, local district uh, sometimes they used to keep the uh, uh, you know soil map. Slope map that can be used from uh, topographical seat, land use modeling and planning. Now you can see how we can propose different type of land use based on the Kharif area, uh, uh, Rabi available, wasteland available, different type of the uh, you know uh, land use land uses have been proposed like a forested a forestation with a special efforts means where the more investment needed agroforestry, agroforestry with salt tolerant species, agricultural horticulture, uh, agro horticulture, uh, agro horticulture with soil conservation, bio derange, double crop area, where fisheries can be proposed, fodder plantation can be done, you know, uh, lake reservoir. So, in this way, this type of the map can be used very, very useful for the local level planners and decision makers and even local individuals. Soil, you know, now soil health card is very important nowadays. That data also can be used for, you know, proposing different type of land use. And so, different land use were su uh, suggested like management of agricultural lands, management of wastelands, a total area under agricultural management is 219 square kilometer, almost covering 68 percent of the total area. Double crop, horticulture, agro horticulture, agro forestry are suggested for alternate land use practices. Management of wasteland, the thrust should be given to bring more of these wasteland under productive use. The main suggestion for these wasteland includes silvy pasture, proper drainage system and reclamation measures. Then management of forest land is not a big uh, area under forest, but whatever we have like a forestation and the gap filling are suggested for forest land management. Second example I would like to take monitoring and assessment of flood region. Particularly for that, here I am taking the middle Ganga plain. 
13 having the 13 water set covering the four districts of southwest Bihar, Bhojpur, Baksar, Bhabhuan, Rotas. It is also a confluence zone of many rivers that contribute the flooding in low-lying area. The study area is covered by rivers from all the direction and water logging problem is very very severe in this zone. In fact, flood affected area has increased since independent in Bihar. For that, we have used the database like IRSP6, list 3 data, the overlay analysis and image classification methods have been used for better understanding of the flood affected areas. Now you can see through this map the different flood affected areas have been shown in this map, particularly along the Ganga, we have a large area under the, uh, uh, so it is a confluence of the Son, Karamnasa and Ganga, Ganga, Son and Karamnasa. So now you can see this the large northern part, but in southern part we have the highland, little highland. Uh, northern part of the region uh, very severely affected by the flood. Result, flooding is considered is a serious limitation for agriculture in the northern part. The past experiences show that the study area uh, comes under low lying and, uh, and uh, backwater from river Karamnasa, the Ganga and the Son are considered as the main region for flooding in the area. The analysis reveals that uh, we have around 2,38,191 hectare of land affected by the flood, which constitute 21.7 percent of the study area. Uh, uh, then we have severe flood, more than uh, 4 months occur along the river Ganga and river Son in Bhojpur and Baksar. And you know this part is a uh, very important part, it is also considered as a rice ball of Bihar. So it is very important to have the improving the rice productivity in this zone by proper management of flood. Now I would like to give you the another important case study from Ram Ganga Basin in UP and now you can see how the remote sensing and GIS can be used here. Used. Now we have taken the census data particularly for the uh, identifying the village boundary and now you can see uh, the number of villages affected identified here and then the no area affected. Such type of the map also can be used by the uh, by the planners, local level planners and decision makers, even for relief operation. So during the flood time, you know they are able the normal course of the river, how much area generally influenced by the flooding, and number of uh, villages affected by the flood. So such type of the flood zonings helps in efficient management of recurring of the flood disaster, risk assessment. I would like to take here this map is from Uttar Kasi area and first what we did, this is also the very severe uh, uh, landslides zone affected area. So we have prepared landslide risk assessment, avalanche, the floods affected and then we combine together, overlay and you can see this the uh, Gaumukh and Gangotri to Uttarkasi. It is possible here that where we have the more high severe area, high uh, risk area, moderate, low and very low. What is the ut uh, you know, utility of such type of the map? Such type of the map can be used by planners and decision makers for you know relief operation or for the planning purpose for different type of the land use. Now infrastructure assessment for sustainable development and here for that you know again the 
uh, a portion of Bihar has been taken. Now you can see the physiographically it is broadly divided into alluvial plain and plateau where alluvial plain is considered is a very very productive land for agriculture and producing the good crops. So we have used the census data and also the little bit remote sensing data also particularly IRSP6 list 3 data. Now you can see this educational facility we map using the data coming from the education department and you can see this the less than 50, 50 to 70, more than 70 percent you know where have the you know, educational facility, medical facility again here less than 5, 5 to 15, more than 15 you know again the data from the health department, drinking water facility you know available we have uh, where we have the available you know more and to less and you can see that we have the more availability of drinking water in the eastern side and little northern side of this map. Then also the irrigation from the irrigation department we collected the data from the uh, you know where we have the area more than 75, 50 to 75. And, this type of you know maps we have prepared and then finally we have prepared the infrastructure map. Now I would like to give you this the predicting the heat island for urban sustainability. This is a very very important the planning here we have included the land use map, the thermal power plants data, the transport node and the area closure to the industrial belt. On the basis of that we have identified where we have very high heat islands available. Vulnerable mapping you can see this the biophysical vulnerability taking the Rajasthan. We have taken monsoon, total annual rainfall, albedo, land use, irrigation, vegetation and here you can find such type of the bio biophysical vulnerability you know for climate change study very very important. Then we can take the several uh, set of uh, you know indicators human and then we can prepare and we can combine. And then you know especially information technology in the future particularly we have to focus on the law, privacy, increasing resolution very very important, visualization of information, user interface is very very important and I would like to conclude that seed technology provides opportunity to assess and monitor complete socio-biophysical characteristics of the earth surface. This special analysis is the most feature of the GIS software that enhance the decision making. So through this you know I am trying my best that how remote sensing can play a very important role as a decision support system. For taking a decision at a local level or regional level how the planners and decision maker can take. You know in this context the output of the various special analysis is very very important in digital and analog form, mapping visualization and desired output can be represented through the cartographic and non-cartographic method of representation. In this way the special information technology is helpful in map making and act as decision support system. Thank you very much. Dear friends, due to paucity of time, we have to stop our lecture here. On that note, we would like to thank Professor Singh for coming to our show and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.